still going to call you tumbleweeds whether you like it or not. If you're new to the channel, I call the people that subscribe to my channel tumbleweeds. I'm Jane and I travel in my Class B RV with my little 13 year old Chihuahua Piglet. We are full time travelers and I've been living in the van or we have been living in the van since uh, first weekend in November of 2023. So we're currently staying at the Blue Water Lake State Park in New Mexico. And I was gonna take you on a hike in this canyon behind me, but it's a little bit of a gloomy, sprinkly day. It's been sprinkling all morning and it's about 10 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. Uh, but there's still a chance it could sprinkle this afternoon, so I decided to pass up on the hike. Instead, I thought I would share another van disaster story with you. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've had a couple of disasters <laughs> this past winter. Uh, first, I was driving around in the desert in quartzite, like I was driving a Jeep, and I tore the sewer system out from under my van. The other disaster was when the awning blew off of my van while I was traveling on the interstate near Winslow, Arizona. I have another video on that. I'll put a link to both of those videos at the end of this video here. So this other disaster actually happened back in 2020 when I was doing van life before, when I was married. So my ex had built out a van for us. This was during COVID and it was in December. We decided we were at, staying at Buckskin State Park in Arizona, near Parker, Arizona. And we decided we're gonna go to Florida. My daughter lives in Jacksonville and it was right before Christmas. So we decided we're just going to take a little trip over to Jacksonville. So after driving about 1,900 miles, we um, were stopping at an exit on I-10 um, near Milton, Florida, and we stopped to get fuel. And when we got off the interstate, there were a couple of gas stations there. One was a Shell and the other was a BP. And they both had signs, you know, advertising the prices of their gas and their diesel. So the diesel at the BP was a little bit less. So we decided to go to the BP. So we, we usually stop and get fuel when we're about half a tank. So we, it was no different then. So we filled up our tank and we decided to keep going on the highway that we were on. I think it was Highway 87 um, over to Navarre Beach because we wanted to see the ocean. So when we, I don't know, it was about five miles or something. I'm not real sure how far it was, but we came to the traffic light um, at the road that goes along the beach there and we're getting ready to, to to turn and all of a sudden the van started shaking and making this clunking noise and then it just died so we both kind of looked at each other like you know we bought this van brand new six months ago how could something be going wrong with it so he started the van back up and we made our turn and it started doing it again. So he pulled off into a parking lot of a business on the side of the road there and the van died again. So I started thinking, well, we just filled up with fuel about five minutes ago. I wonder if we got bad fuel. So he said, he decided um, we couldn't stay where we were parked because it was it was kind of, we were taking up a lot of the parking space there. So we 
had seen a, um, an Exxon station to the right of where we had turned onto the highway. So we decided to try to go back there and park and there was a kind of a big area there. So he started the van back up again and we made it, I don't know how far it was, half a mile or something like that, and it started clunking and shaking again. So he just kind of coasted off into the parking area there and turned off the van. And we decided we better not try to start the van anymore as if we've got bad fuel that, you know, could hurt it. So I got on my iPhone and started looking for places that we could call to see if they could take a look at the van to see what, what the problem was exactly and if it could be fixed. The problem was it was December 19th, which was a Saturday before Christmas. Nothing was open. So we decided we would get a hotel and we would have the van towed to the hotel and then we would figure out what we were going to do there. Well, all of the tow places that we called were closed as well, except for one. This guy uh, was a worker there and he told us that he could come and get us. It would be a couple of hours, but um, he could do it. He was actually on his day off, but he could go, you know, get the truck and he could come pick us up, but we ha would have to pay him in cash. So I found a hotel, which was the residence inn in Fort Walton Beach, which was about 16 miles from where our van was stalled. So the guy told us it would be $250 to tow us there. So we really had no choice because none of the other tow places were open. So uh, he came and loaded up the van and luckily I still have some footage from where I filmed the uh, loading of the van on the, the tow vehicle. Are you having fun yet? No. <laughs> It was a very harrowing experience, but the guy was super nice and um, he towed us to the hotel. When we got to the hotel, we were exhausted. We have three dogs traveling with us too, but a big dog, the black one named Sasha, we had a little dog named Utah, which we named Utah because we found her in the desert in Utah and we rescued her. She was about to start. And then we have Piglet, who I still have with me here. I'm not married anymore, of course. I think I did mention that it was my ex. But uh, so he started, um, you know, calling around places to see if anybody could help us out. And of course, it was a Saturday. So I think that was actually like on a Monday where we had to wait until we could start calling people. And he finally found a place that could uh, take a look at it. And by this time, we had realized exactly what had happened. When we were sitting at the BP station, 
I remember looking at a sign in the front door that says, we do not have diesel. <laughs> I didn't think anything of it at the time. And now, I mean, at that moment I realized, oh my God, we put gas in the diesel tank. And if you have ever been to a BP station, you'll notice that some of the gas handles are green and the diesel handles are actually black. A lot of the gas stations that you go to, the diesel is going to have a, a green handle. But I guess we didn't go to very many BP stations <laughs> back then. Cause, so we made it the terrible mistake of putting gas in our diesel tank. And it was about a half a tank that we filled up with gas. So during this time, you know, nothing was open and we just had the worst thoughts. We, I Googled and found where some people said, oh, it could cost you, you know, up to $5,000. They might have to drop the tank and all these horror stories. So finally, I think it was, I think it was on a Tuesday when we finally were able to take it in and we called the same tow guy back. He came, picked up the van, charged us the exact same amount to tow it to the repair place. And luckily, all they had to do was drain the tank. So we got away with, I think, I think it cost less than $500 to have all that done. And so we finally got the van back and all was well. And we learned a very expensive lesson cost us $500 in towing charges. The hotel room was, I'm gonna guess, probably close to $300 a night, and I think we had to stay three nights. And then the cost to have the tank drained and all that. Hello. Repairs on the road. Were you able to fix it? Yep. Okay, so when we, were, when we got Sydney towed, they uh, dragged her butt in the, on the ground and it kind of knocked the, uh, the LPD tank loose. So we're here at Lowe's in Fort Walton Beach where we got some materials we needed to repair. Or James got the materials to repair Sydney. So oh, repairs one after the other for Sydney lately. But it looks like we're good now, so we're heading to Jacksonville now. See you later. So it cost us probably about $2,500 dollars <laughs> to, to, to uh, get the van back in working order. And let me tell you, I always check when I fill up my van now. Is this the diesel handle? Is that the diesel button? If I don't see diesel on the tank, on the pump, I don't even stop. So I just wanted to share that with you because I'm sure it has happened to many, many other people. In fact, I actually emailed BP and was complaining about them having green handles <laughs> for their diesel for their gas instead of diesel. And uh, they promptly uh, told me that there is no standard for what color the handle has to be for diesel. So you just have to be careful. So the moral of the story is that gas is greener at BP and the diesel is black. Catch you next time, bye.